Um, this section right here, the intermediate low, if you look on your paper, it says it too. Um, that's where that's where the students begin to feel the language. Where they're not just repeating after you, uh, and they're not 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 just writing paragraphs from little individual things that you've taught them, but they're they're using it. It's real to them. I can understand the main idea and some details. When they're listening, they actually, when somebody's speaking to them, they can understand it. They don't have to ask you, what was that? You, know, you don't have to take them word for word for word through it, etc. Well, let me tell you one activity that I did that I didn't like at all <laughs> afterwards. I thought I was going to love it. I bought these little books from Teachers Discovered, which are really neat books, the uh, Robin Hood and and the Count of Monte Cristo, you know, in the language. And I allowed them to read them in groups. It took a lot longer than I thought it was for them to read just one of those little books. Uh, but I allowed them to use all the resources that they wanted to to get through and understand it. And then they were supposed to make a PowerPoint presentation, present to the class their story. Now their job was to make sure they presented in a way the other kids can understand it. They didn't. They, they read it, they got the gist of it, and then when they presented it, the other kids were like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm worried about my own little presentation. They didn't understand it, so I thought, okay, I'm going to have to, what is it, go back and punt? Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so we started with um, stories that we knew already, Little Red Riding Hood. Um, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. In fact, I let the students choose their favorite fairy tale. Did you know it was interesting? I had some students go, what's a fairy tale? That was worrisome. <laughs> but they did, they did. And I said, well, you remember Cinderella, all these little fun stories that you like. You choose your story for homework. They went home and they were to write it out. And that's okay that they used whatever they wanted to. They just had to know that they were going to have to use that language when they came into class. So if they went and did a little, um, where you put it in the little box and it changes it for you, they're going to have to use it the next day. And so they, they'll get themselves in their own little hot water. But they wrote those stories. And then they had to, have you ever done In or Out or Circle? Who has not? <laughs> Try it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. You have an inner circle, a group of students. Half of your students are in an inner circle and they're pointed out. The other half are on the outer circle and they're face to face with somebody on the inner circle. And then you converse. A bell rings or you say ding and then they move to the, uh, the next person. It's absolutely wonderful to keep them involved. But in this case, they told their story to a, another student and then by the way I had already checked what they were saying so that they didn't continually ingrain the incorrect Spanish but they told their story to a student and they had questions that they were supposed to ask that student about the story they could help their, their partner out. You know, remember this means this, or this is what this word means. There are a lot of times they're studying Cinderella and they know vocabulary words from Cinderella. Somebody else is doing Jack of the Beanstalk. They know how to do that, but they don't understand these vocabularies. They're teaching each other. So they go around and you usually have about eight or nine times that you go around. By the end, you're telling your story. You're not looking at anything. You're just boom, 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 telling it. The others are listening. Then we went through and you actually just put the name of, on your whiteboard. Do you have little whiteboards? Have you ever used those? If not, they're wonderful. On their whiteboard, they put the name of their story and their partner had to tell them back that story. Well, now, now they were the expert in the story. And so they, they listened to their partner just try to, try to get through it. And then they helped them, teaching them with some more vocabulary. By the time they've taught all these other people how to tell their story, it was no problem at all. And then they, they're telling all these other stories too. At the end, their test was to, I just told them, write three stories for me and then come up and just tell me one of your, your favorite stories. 
and they could do it. And I just imagine if I'd have done that before, or if I had just taught them the story. Really, it's, it's the difference between loading a gun and shooting a gun. I spent a lot of years loading guns, loading, giving them that information, they, and they're getting it in their mind. They're getting it in their mind. I'm putting it in them. Wonderful. But they weren't shooting their guns, and so the intermediate low is a level where they're shooting the gun. Okay. Um, another activity that we did, which is along the same line, which <laughs> I was so happy with this activity. We were studying what to do in the doctor's office. What somebody might ask us, what we might say. So of course you're going to have to do your body parts, your how to say illnesses, how to ask questions. Now, in everything that we do, yeah, we're on an it, we're working towards an intermediate level. But you always start off introducing in a novice way. They still have to repeat after you words. They still have to uh, somehow in a grunt work figure out those basic words that they're going to use later. So we loaded our guns by little TPR activities, little songs like Es la Cabeza or raps, Es la Cabeza, Ese Cuello, Son Los Hombros, Son Los you know, all that stuff. We also had, I love yoga. Now, I don't know if any of you do yoga, but you know, things that you fall in love with, you could use that in your class. So I fell in love with yoga. I'd taken it for years. So I taught them a lesson in yoga for one day. And they just listened to me giving the instructions. But then at the end of the class, which after I woke them up from the end of yoga, they love that, uh, they sat with a partner and told me back what we did. And because they had listened to me that whole class period, they could. Now, every once in a while, they'd have to say, how do you say this word? All right. I told them. Yeah. But they, they gave it back really well. Okay. That was a level where they're just really giving back what I'm saying, right? So the next day, they were given scenarios, put in groups of four, and the first group Every, somebody was a receptionist, a doctor, a patient, and a nurse. The patient might have a cold. Okay, so I have written on a little sheet of paper, you're a patient, you have a cold. And this is a receptionist, and you're a receptionist who you're very hyper and very happy, and everything's just so happy. And even if your patient comes in and they're dying, you're just, oh, that's so nice, have a seat, you know, that kind of person. You're a nurse who could care less, you're just in a hurry. And you're a doctor who was up all night, so you're falling asleep. But the key here was they could not use notes, they could not use a dictionary, they had to sit with a group and just go for it. And they couldn't have done that had we not done the little loading of the gun activities before. And the first time through, it was really, really stilted. They were like, I don't know how to say this. Well, say it a different way, circumvent. Do it the best way you can. And they presented, we videotaped. And their first one was not too good. Well, I could have thought, mm, they didn't do too well, I give up. But I said, no, let's try it again. And I handed out new scenarios or passed them around. They exchanged them. The second time through, they did better. We did it again. I was, I was, I was uh, very much stuck on this activity now. We did it four times through. By the fourth time, they were just pulling it out. They were saying what they wanted to say. All these phrases were popping off. So I would say the best thing for my classes were sustained, continual, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And just keep them in the language. And they loved the, lo loved the little funny scenarios that we had. We actually had one time, it was a really, really high level class and they were very understanding and one guy pulled up, you're pregnant. <laughs> And yeah, it was it was quite cute. But <laughs> um, what else about that activity? Oh, uh, yeah, and with the listening activity, the other groups when you're presenting, they're deciding which character you had. You gave them the list of the characters, the little character descriptions, and they said, "Oh, this is the person that's like this," and did very very well. So I love that activity. 
No. I did that with a Spanish three class. They're upper level. They can they can move, and they're trying. Now, I had a Spanish two class that only a mother could love. Okay, I was like, Lord, help me make it through this semester. And I said that every day before they came in, and every day after they left. But the very last unit that we did, and have you ever done a unit on um, touring the Latino world or the French world or whatever world you're touring, taking them from country to country? Or not? That's a, that's a good experience, and that's what we did. But. I had done that in the past where I had videos for them or ex explanations and we took our little passport around and traveled but I was doing most of the here being a tour guide which is okay for the teacher to be the tour guide but the tour guide part was taking all the class period and then they were just taking a test on it and there was no language involved really so I thought okay I'm gonna have to fix this so do the first little part with an introduction and any grammar that I needed to teach for them to use it. And then I gave them conversations. They were supposed to pretend that in a group of four or five, they were traveling together and traveling to these countries. Let me give you, let's read through some of these conversations. Every day they had to have a conversation about what was going on in that country. You know what, guys? I cannot see the. Well, I've got glasses. Never mind. First, they went to Mexico. And they began by writing about how I feel while I'm on the train. I did a lot of things in writing and contemplative activities before they started their conversations just to give them a little bit more practice with the vocabulary, with the grammar that they need so that when they sat down to have their conversations, they could. One of the conversations is, you're in Mexico and you've been to see uh, uh, Frida Kahlo's work and some of the murals from um, Diego Rivera, okay? And now, you're asking each other about the art that you saw and what you did about it. One person really likes Rivera and another really likes Kahlo. One person doesn't understand why art's important. Can you see how this is real life? Because you're going to have to say, I don't want to do this, let's go to the beach, you know? And um, another person is the smart person in the group and explains why it is important. They, they presented the, the conversation to me while the others are still working on theirs. And then they went back and for their proof, they put it on a, um, we have Vocaroos. Have you ever seen Vocaroo? That's written in there. You might want to look that up, Vocaroo. And Audacity, where you can tape yourself. With Audacity, you can tape it and put it onto the e-lingua folio. Vocaroos, you can't do that. Plus, they disappear in two months. So after two months, if you want something where the kids can be heard, you can show it to their parents, go ahead and do Vocaroo and it disappears after a while. But if you want something that they can keep forever to show somebody, remind them that they need to do something like with audacity. But they would go back and they would um, tape their conversations while I'm listening to another group. So you have to be real practical too. You can't just say, okay, we're going to all present. You, know, you don't want any wasted time. If everybody's presenting to the class, these kids aren't going to be ready. You have to wait till everybody's ready. No. So they present to me and then they present on uh, the computer while somebody else is presenting to me. They're com presenting on the computer. And then I gave them, um, they had a little journal. Where if you've ever traveled with a group, you probably kept a journal of this is what we did today. So that's what they did. They wrote out what they did and uh, answered some questions about their activity for that day. And uh, one activity, our, our FFA has this wonderful farm. It has two llamas that uh, protect the, the goats and cows from, um, from coyotes that we have around. And I thought, wow, llamas. Yeah, we can talk about Peru. So we pretended we were in Peru that day. 
and went down to the farm and the FFA students, which is great inter integration, you know, they talked about how they, how they took care of the animals. And then the kids sat around and did a conversation. This time I didn't give them specific things to say. I thought that they were really experiencing it so they could, I said, so have a conversation about being here at the farm. And remember, you're in Peru. We have goats and we have llamas, which are perfect for what we're doing. They did beautifully. They came up with great conversations. But it was after we did five or six others where I guided them into, this is the way you feel about this. We went to Guatemala and we were on a chicken bus. We rode six hours on a chicken bus and when they did their conversation they sat on a chair and they were going and one of them had to hate this bus, another one was really excited and by the end they felt like they had traveled around the world and I felt like they had traveled around the world. At the end of their little journal they had to write what was the best part of their trip and you know, they didn't say, I liked what we studied about. They said, I liked when we went to Peru. Or I liked when we were on the chicken bus and he got sick. And as if they had really experienced it. So, I guess my point is that we want to give them as many opportunities as we can to use it. You can fix it, you can help them fix it, but just like it, as if you were in that country yourself. Do you guys have any questions about this? I'm just wondering about how big are your classes when you're trying to go and do and pair up and things like that? About 25. Okay. Yeah, they're not huge, huge. And, you know, my Spanish three, they're down into the twenties. But the uh, Spanish too, you know, they can get up 28, 29. We're not, we're not as bad as when I first started teaching. I had a class of 42, but that was years ago. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Well, did I keep talking about five minutes? <laughs> you know what? We've had, we have some time. Why don't we experience this? I guess they'll ding for us when, we're when it's time to try. What languages do you speak? Spanish. Spanish, 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 Spanish. Wonderful, wonderful. You two be partners, you two be partners, and the three of you be partners, okay? Let's do, let's do a doctor's office routine, okay? Now, remember the first time, of course, if you're a native speaker, you're like, okay, this is not gonna be hard at all. But some of you are gonna feel like, you know, I speak Spanish, but I'm nervous about speaking it with this native speaker. You as teachers are probably feeling that same thing that the students feel. So I want you to go through it one time and realize that this is how they feel, okay? So you're the patient, you're the doctor, okay? You're the receptionist, and you're a patient. Now, you're very, very sick. You just tell whatever problems you have. And you are in a hurry. You just, you don't care. You could care less. You have this really good looking guy. You're meeting Johnny Depp for lunch. Okay. <laughs> or no, 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 well, whoever. Okay, now with the doctor, the doctor was up all night, falling asleep. The patient keeps trying to wake the doctor up to tell him what to do, what, what's wrong, okay? You are a nurse who is very, very loving yes. to the patient right here. Mm -hmm. yes. But for some reason, you're mad at the doctor. Okay? <laughs> so whenever you speak to the patient, you're really, really sweet. And when you speak to the doctor, you just yeah, contempt. Okay? So just take a few minutes and practice some things you might want to say in front of everybody. Yo soy la, la paciente. La paciente. Sí. Uh, Entonces. Eres muy amable. Uh -huh. Y qué más? Uh, me gustan tus ojos. Oh, gracias, gracias. Uh, me, me siento muy mal. Ay, y tengo dolor de cabeza y me duele el estómago. Yo tengo, tengo muchas medicinas. De... 
Sí, muchas pastillas, por favor, porque me siento oh, sí. horrible. Horrible. Oh, hola. ¿Estás enferma? Sí, bien sí, enferma. ¿La doctora? Sí, soy yo. Ay. ¿Por qué estás aquí? Porque yo soy la médica. Quiero yo soy la enfermera. Ay. <laughs> It's hard to be the patient. I know. Oh, really. <laughs> like, I just feel it, bad. It, it is hard. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you got to be careful. Right? Remember what you just said. I know. <laughs> oh. When you listen, I want you to say, have some ideas on what they might could have added, okay? What are some words they might could have used instead? Uh, oh, 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 well, thank you. Oh.